So if x is a point, then its nth homology group is zero, and the only non-trivial homology group it has is in dimension zero. So h n of x is zero for all n greater than zero, and it is in zeroth dimension h zero x is ring of integers. Now this is extremely important because when you talk about reduced homology group, what we want is that a space which is equivalent to point should have zero homology groups in all dimensions. So we will slightly modify what we are writing here in a bit. So what is the proof? The proof is very simple. There is a simple like a unique singular n simplex sigma n for each n. So if it was simplical complex, we would have just written a point in C zero and. Uh, put zeros everywhere and it would have been clear. But here we have maps acting on the space. So we have this maps in all dimensions. So see that there is slightly more complexity here, but uh, that complexity is not much as, you, as we will see. Yeah, notice that in simplical complex we would have very easy, you know, we would have just put single integers. Yeah, so so what is the, you just apply the boundary to it. So what, uh, so before we proceed any further, just apply the boundary to it. So this simplex sigma n minus one is unique. Yeah, let me color it. Why I'm coloring it? Because I want to, since this is unique, it can come out in the front. And what we get is, uh, these are n plus one terms. Yeah, you can see why it goes from zero to n. So zero to n, zero, one, two, three, four to n is n plus one. So this is zero for n odd because n plus one is even, even number of terms will cancel out, minus one plus one. And for n even, n plus one is odd, so you just get sigma n minus one. So this is how the complex is going to look like. Yeah, there's a unique singular n simplex in every dimension. Now again, I will say we would have, if this was simplical complex, you would just put ring of integers in C0 and 0 everywhere else. But since it's a singular, we are putting ring of integers. So what should we write here? This is C1. So C1 is odd multiplication by 0. C2 is even multiplication by 1. So you see that for H0, everything is easy, easy always. C0 over image of delta 1, which is 0. C0 is integers. So what we get is integers. Okay, that is the latter part of the proof. What is H1? It's kernel of delta one over image of delta two. What is kernel of delta one? Kernel of delta one is uh, nothing but the entire ring of integers. As you see, for yeah, so this is zero. What about H2? So numerator is zero, so this becomes zero. So this is true for all odd cases. Yeah, take argument of H1 and extend it for all odd cases. And you can extend the second argument for all even cases. As you can see, if it is even, then you have an injective map, so kernel is zero. And if it is odd, it is multiplication by zero map. So entire complex lies in the kernel. And that is pretty much it, the argument. So why reduced homology group? The reduced homology groups allow us to build general theory. And in fact, when you use categories and functors or uh, later on study generalized cohomology or homology theories, you will always encounter reduced homology groups. So they make life easy. They make proofs easy. And uh, we will uh, actually, in the evolution of the course, we will try to do something with reduced homology and other homology groups. The difference, uh, in fact, what proofs I have seen, the difference is just in the last line of the sequence. Uh, but uh, reduced homology groups make life much more easier. So what is reduced homology? So as I have mentioned before, we want for a point for all groups to be zero. So we just put a tilde over uh, H to represent reduced homology. So let us write this down.
So how do we do it? So you take our standard simplex or chain complex and append a ring of integers to the end of it. That is it. And the map is what? The map is just the same old map which we have been using. So you see this map is clearly on to. So what are the two important points we get from this? The first point is that for n greater than 0, there is essentially no difference because we have done nothing. But it is in the 0th group there is a difference which arises. H0 of x is nothing now but the reduced homology group and direct sum with integers. Now as you can see in this case now the point will be 0 because, yeah, because of the direct sum. You should also be paid 110 of Hatcher. So now I want to talk about homotopy invariance. But before we do so, let us recall the definition of homotopically equivalent spaces. So take two spaces x and y and they are homotopically equivalent. If you can construct a map f from x to y and a map g from y to x. So let us write this down such that f not g is homotopic to id on y and g not f that is first apply f and then apply g is homotopic to id on x. So the fundamental idea is this. Homotopically equivalent spaces have isomorphic homology groups. So what are the examples? So if space x is contractible, then x is isomorphic to a point. So the reduced homology groups are 0. The second point is uh, Mobius. Now this is an exercise in Hatcher, I think the first exercise of chapter 2. So Mobius is isomorphic to circle. So so see, I have already started using reduced homology groups. So take a map f from x to y. This induces a map f hash from c and x chain complex x to chain complex y. Now how does this map come from? It's very easy. It's just obvious actually. So you apply sigma here, you apply f here, this is given to you. So this map is f hash. So what is it taking? It is taking sigma here and mapping it to, yeah. Let us write it down here again. So this map acts linearly. So what does that, that mean? So as you know that uh, we have to first write the free group f hash acts on this free group. So now I'm saying f hash is acting on c and x. Acting on c and x. Yeah. So linearly means it jumps the coefficients and comes directly inside. So f hash is acting on c and x. So again, what does f hash of sigma is? Nothing but this f naught of sigma i. That is it. Now why is this important? Uh, this we are going to use in uh, let us draw this important map which we will get. So 
So we are drawing map between two chain complexes. This map has been induced by a homotopy map F. So we need to show that this diagram is commutative. So you start with left hand side, you are acting on the boundary, uh, just write down the formula for the boundary, sigma acting on the simplex with ith vertex missing. I use linearity, bring f hash inside and say that uh, take sigma i minus 1 raised to the power i outside. Yeah, now this obviously when you this looks precisely like the boundary of delta f hash yeah because f naught sigma inside is nothing but f hash and so minus 1 raised to the power i sigma i is nothing but boundary of f hash yeah that is pretty clear you apply the boundary operator what you get is inside the expression you have f0 sigma which is acting on the simplex with i ith vertex missing yeah this is what we get by using boundary